Hi, this is Colleen, and I'm going to show you how to use Fieldwire for common general contractor workflows. In this video, I'll show you how GCs use Fieldwire for punch lists. So let's get to it. All right, let's take a look at how my GC clients are currently utilizing Fieldwire for punch list. This will be a relatively similar process to QAQC, but just slightly different as we're tracking with different tags, different categories, and so on. So I have a punch walk coming up for this entire floor on, in my first building. I'm going to create a task that is not pinned directly to the plan, but is associated with the plan as a whole. So to do so, rather than clicking my pin up here, I'll click plus new task on my sidebar. You can see that this is a diamond task because it is associated with the plan as a whole. And I'll call this punch walk 10 7. I'll add this to my punch walk category since this isn't associated with the single trade. I'll add a hashtag here that we'll call punch 10 7 so that I can filter to everything that's from this punch walk, but then I'll also just add the punch tag here as well. I have a checklist that I use over and over again every time I do a punch walk. So similar to the QAQC punch list, oop, I don't wanna create a new punch list. I'll just add my pre-punch list checklist and post it to the task. Again, these checklists allow your teams to be really consistent and make sure that they're getting every last detail. I can add a location here as well, since this is level one. I'll add a start and end date as today, so my team knows that they need to complete it today. I'll assign this to Dan once again, so he gets that notification. And I can enter cost and manpower if that is applicable as well. I'll then message Dan and let him know client comes tomorrow, please complete this afternoon. Then we'll go up to, to Dan's iPad and you can see that he's received push notifications for this task. So he can swipe open and he'll go right to the task. He has all of those checklist items that he needs and he can start to go down the list. Maybe he gets to flooring and there's an issue with a damaged carpet tile. So he taps it twice to mark it with an X. You can see that my initials have re been replaced with Dan's to show that he's the one checking off these boxes. We wanna track the items that come out of this punch walk as individual tasks rather than within the punch walk task itself. So rather than adding a photo of the damaged carpet tile within this task, Dan will create a related task, adding the plus sign and then related task. So we can create a task or find an existing task. Because I wanna attach this related task to A2.01-1, I'm gonna tap in there and then create the task right on the plan. Then I can relate it back to my punch walk, which I'll search for here. Punch walk 10.7. And now I can jump back and forth between the tasks. Let's take a look at some of the quick tools that we can utilize in the field. So if I wanna add a category here, I can do so. I'm gonna add this flooring. I can even change the status to P1. I can change the assignee to my flooring foreman. And then I can also add a hashtag here and I'll say punch 10, seven. I'll then use talk to text. Hey James, this needs to be fixed this afternoon before the client comes tomorrow morning. Go ahead and post it and then you can see actually the first message that you enter also becomes the title. I should have entered the title beforehand. So we'll just get rid of that. And instead call this replace damaged carpet tile. Now James will see the proper title there. 
Dan can then snap a photo of the damaged carpet tile. He can mark it up, add an arrow, maybe even add some text or use the other colors we have available. And James gets all of this information because James is also utilizing Fieldwire as a user. If James is not a user on our Fieldwire project, I can export this specific task and send it to him in an email. So I'll click the export button here. And because I'm logged into the native mail app on my iPad, this will populate within an email. So I can just enter James's email at the top and then he gets all of this context with the messages as well as the photos. I'll just delete this draft for now. And then once James has completed the task, he can either respond in the email if he's not on Fieldwire, or he can come in and change that status to completed. You can see that verified is grayed out. That's because Dan is only a member and only admins can verify tasks. That's a really good way to get two sets of eyes on every piece of work and avoid a lot of rework in the future. So let's go back to the web browser and take a look at how we can look at all of our tasks overall and report on our punch list. As you might have seen earlier, we have our Kanban view here where you can see all of your tasks listed out by priority. It's super easy to filter between your categories, whether those are trades or types of tasks, just by clicking on each of the categories here. You can quickly see all the tasks that are assigned to you or all the tasks that you're a watcher on. This means that you're getting notified for all of these tasks. If I, as the project manager, am going through and reviewing all my completed items, I can click into each of them and see to make sure that they are completed properly. And then I can go ahead and drag and drop it into Verified. My verified tasks will become archived after a certain period of time, which you can dictate in your settings tab. This is just so that you can keep your projects clean and your plans aren't busied up with tasks that have already been completed. We can also take a look at these tasks in a calendar view or a Gantt view. This Gantt view is really great for your sub coordination meetings. You can throw this up on the big screen while everybody comes into the trailer. You can adjust the start and end dates by dragging and dropping. And then you see tasks over here that haven't been scheduled out yet where you can just drag and drop them right onto the Gantt chart. You can, if you're adding in that manpower field, you can see how many people you need per day on each task, as well as how many people you'll need total on site each day. When we want to report on this punch walk specifically, again, we'll come to generate reports, create a new report, or use our all open items punch list report. You can see I've just used the punch tag here, but I could also filter down to my punch 10-7. Let's just keep it at punch for now. I've only done my open items, so just priorities one, two, and three, not those that are completed or verified. I can sort by specific categories or locations, start and end dates, hashtags, and more. And then let's take a look at what this report looks like. Again, you can see that my company logo and project information appears automatically. I have my nice table of contents, which is actually what our summary report looks like. And then I have my individual punch list items listed out. Just like in the quality report, I have my messages, my photos, my mini maps of my plans, and all the information that my subs need if I need to send this to them in a formal report, whether it's just because they need to be pushed a little bit more or because they're not on the Fieldwire platform. I can also send this to my architect as a great overview. And then on this particular report, I've chosen to include the most 
up-to-date marked up version of my plans at the back so that anybody who receives this can reference exactly where those tasks are on the plan. As you can see here, I have task number 32, so I can reference back to that specific point. That was the general overview of how to use Fieldwire for Punch. Please let us know if you have any questions or need any assistance. Thanks.